Welcome to Sipping on Excellence. This is Coach KJ, and I'm here with my man, my dude, the Doc. And this is where we will be discussing the exceptional that is absolutely attainable. My friends, here's to living that extraordinary life. Cheers. <laughs> so, y'all, Coach is in a mood today. Look at him. Hoodies on. Y'all that can see him, y'all going Y'all gonna laugh at this one. Dude is on one today. He came in. This fool came in today to train me and has been. He, he came in hot. He came in absolutely on fire today. And I was just like, please, God, don't let me die. <laughs> you know, what I find funny every time I train someone, I'm the one that needs the towel. <laughs> I sweat thinking. Coming in hot. <laughs> Coming in hot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Hey, man. Welcome, y'all, to another episode. Another another episode. Sipping on excellence. I'm trying. We br- <laughs> where, we're, where we're bringing y'all excellence each and every week. We are. We are. Each we and are. every week, we're giving we y'all something great to sip on. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Um, you may not be having a good time, but we're having a great time. All the time. Always. I'm here for a good time. You know Not it. for a long time. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can. Right. Ain't he do it? And don't he do it? <laughs> no, he will. <laughs> <laughs> Say that. <laughs> oh man, we are back at it another week, y'all. Um, Sipping on excellence. I this, am. I'm excited about this one. Yeah, this is this I'm, is a good one. Yeah. This one, this one, hopefully you guys, well, we hope it's going to be a good one because we haven't recorded it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but the conversation is one that um, we talk about in our daily lives on and off. Everybody does. It, everybody does, but we really talk about it. Yeah. You and I. And a lot of people do exactly what we're going to be talking about today on a regular basis. Just been, subconsciously. Yeah. They don't even know that they're doing it. But mm-hmm. you, if you question them about it, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, maybe I do do this yeah um but before we get into that man let's uh let's just catch up man how has this week man been for you man you know how this week was for me (laughs) (laughs) rough oh my goodness (laughs) no actually it was not rough you know we need information yes and sometimes that information can lead to progression no it not sometimes it will always Always. lead lead to progression if you utilize that information, so <laughs> if you accept that information as it's given to you, right? Like, like I'm, like I'm Ethan Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> if you choose to accept it, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I chose. Woo! I chose. <laughs> yeah. First of all, let's let, let's just back it up. That MRI, bro. Dude, okay, what? so I'm going to tell you what's going on. This brother right here is back as trash <laughs> as Doc calls it. I but. was trying to. I was trying to be nice. Nah, I wasn't. No, he wasn't. I wasn't. I don't have to be. I don't have to be to this guy. I can. I can. I don't have to pull punches. And you know what? That's what I appreciate. And so, <laughs> you know, dude was having some back issues. Hey, you know, I just want to get my back checked. <laughs> well, he got it checked. All right. <laughs> How do I put this nicely without putting his business in the street? His back is trash. Yeah. But. He's not, which is the incredible part. Right. About it. You know, it's like I look at his back and I see people in my office come in with scans that aren't half as crazy looking as his. And they can't move. And I'm always amazed, especially now, because I never got a look inside his back until now. <laughs> and especially now I look at him and I'm like, at first I was like, the fact that you move like you do as a big guy yeah. is incredible. In, I'm, a in big I'm a big dude. And he's a big dude. And number two, the fact that now I know what your back looks like and you still have that flexibility, that mobility. <laughs> that Thank shit's you. impressive. <laughs> Thank you very much. And all I can say is today, I was like, he's giving me a stretching workout, mobility workout today and moving better than me. And I'm like, my back is fine. I feel like shit compared to this dude. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm like, I'm over there like, oh, right, oh, I got to right, move a little better. Right, right. <laughs> you know, and every once in a while, you know, I don't do it often, but yeah. I had to demonstrate just a little bit. And I'm looking at him as he's demonstrating me. I'm like, this dude's damn near in a full split. <laughs> I can't touch my toes. <laughs> <laughs> and my back is good. Right. My back feels fine. Yeah. 
But so it's just it's he's and I will say this dude is living proof that when I tell patients, look, strength, mobility, flexibility are the keys to keeping a healthy life and a healthy back. And the ones that fight me on it, I just want to be like, yeah, I'm sorry. What I thought was theory in my brain right. has been proven as fact over and over again. You don't want to help yourself. I can't help you. Right. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about you. I may not talk about you specifically, <laughs> but um, you are definitely going to be a huge example. Let alone pacifically. Pacifically. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Woo. Oh my but yeah, goodness! This dude, um, yeah, I, I was, I was, I was impressed with what I saw, but more impressed with what I saw with you. Thank you, and thank you. Your ability to move. I'm like, okay, now I, I get why working out and stretching and staying flexible and being strong is so important. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's what's keeping you out of my office. <laughs> I mean, for, literally, it is. No, oh, I know, I get it, and but I think. Even more importantly is that getting that information and knowing what what's really going on. Right. My brain just immediately just said, I feel better now. I understand. Oh, I can go this route instead of this route. Well, there's power in knowledge. Yeah, man. You know, there's yeah. power in knowledge. Once you know, then you can be like, okay. Whew. And knowing is half the battle. <laughs> G.I. Joe, the greatest American hero. Y'all can't see my face right now, but really? <laughs> this dude, oh, this dude right here. Boy, I just I, had to take a moment of pause. I told you I'm on one today. <laughs> right. yeah, I, I didn't lie. Man, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good getting that information. Oh, man. Man. Outside I, of that MRI, though, bro. Whew, whew. Lordy. I went and listen. I don't know if you guys know about your claustrophobia or have any idea. You Get learn quickly. Get an MRI. <laughs> you will fear, adju- if you have any fear of any type of small space, get an MRI, and it'll show you just how deep that fear is. Even if you don't know you have a fear. Well, I couldn't watch the movie uh, Buried. Is that what it's called? With um, 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 uh, Ryan Reynolds. He was in a coffin. I don't remember. I don't yeah. remember that one. And <laughs> it. I couldn't watch the movie. I couldn't watch uh, the scene in, um, uh, what is it, Kill Bill, when she was in the coffin. Oh, yeah. And she had to punch her way out. Yeah. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. That changed channel. <laughs> couldn't do it, huh? Mm, couldn't <laughs> breathe, couldn't breathe. Got to go, got to go. Too close, too close. Yeah, get wheeled into that coffin, that yeah. MRI, and it teaches you and real you got, quick. And you got music on, you, you got know? music on, and the hard part is you got to lay still. You can't move because any little movement changes the quality of the MRI, and you yeah. can't see anything. Yeah. So... If you're in pain, it's hard to lay still. If you got a little phobia of tight spaces, <laughs> it's even harder to lay still. And people are like, ah, just close your eyes. Really? No. If it was that simple? No. <laughs> I'd say the best way is focus on your breath and count. Like literally see the, see the entire number. Close your eyes, see the number. 1,001, 1,002. Because they'll tell you, okay, this is going to be five minutes. You might as well call it, count off five minutes. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel you. Yeah, you. You might as well, because that's the fastest way you get to that five minutes. <laughs> I, I, I know. I I feel you, man. Yeah. Um, what's going on with you, man? Enough of me. My trash bag. <laughs> nah, man. I I can't complain, man. Life's life's pretty good. Yeah. You know, this week I didn't get as much work in from a from a self care standpoint as I wanted to because you know that shoulder was giving yeah. me the blues. So I decided to just do you know, row, bike, and stay off the weights and let this, sometimes you got to let your body heal. And today is moving a lot better just because of that. Um, But yesterday, yesterday was a little tough at work, and I'll tell you why. I have a patient that I was seeing who's got a a bad problem, and he's, you know, basically kind of going, for all intents and purposes, paraplegic. Mm. Um, He's got a cancer that's, affecting all of his bones etc and it's having the conversation with him of if we try to fix this number one is it going to give you your legs back mm-hmm. number two the, is, is the is the risk 
worth the perceived benefit. And so I went through it all with him. And he's like, all right, I have pain every day. I haven't really walked in a month or so. Um, my legs right now don't work. If you operate on me, what's the likelihood of my legs working? I was like very slim. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what's the likelihood of me having increased pain? I was like very high. Okay. And he's like, so I'm going to have more pain after this surgery. Mm. Um, it's a big surgery and potentially the odds are that I won't get my legs back. I won't walk again completely. And I was like, that's a, a fair assumption. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, but I'm not God. I can't tell you what's going to happen. He's like, so why would I have surgery? And here's the funny thing. I paused and I didn't know what to tell him. Wow. And so I outright told him, I was like, I don't know. I really said, I don't know why you would have surgery. That's fair. If, if you, if you look at it the way that I presented it to you, mm -hmm. you know, um, could you get worse? I'm like, you've already lost sensation sort of in your torso all the way down. You're basically, you know, you got a little movement in your toes. If we operated on you, would you get enough movement back in your lower extremities that you'd be able to stand and walk or move your legs? I was like, I can't give you a percentage of what that would be. I was like, I don't know. And he was like, huh. So I'm, he's like, so basically I need to wrap my head around being in a wheelchair for ever or at the least a very long time. Uh -huh. And I was just like, that's a very, because I'll never tell anybody yes. I'm always right. like, that's a high probability. Right. And then he looked at me again. He's like, so can you tell me why I should have surgery? <laughs> and I had to put the doctor in me aside because we already talked about all the science and my theories and what I thought. I was mm -hmm. in his room with him for about an hour. And young guy, he's in his 60s. Okay. And up until two years ago, was working out every day. Yeah. And so I was like, hmm. He says working out is 80% of his life. Wow. Like that's his thing. Wow. And the last two years or so, it's been gone. And so I was like, is there in my mind, I'm like, is there something I can do to get him back to that? And I was like, there's no surgery that's going to get him back to that. Um, is there a surgery that will get him out of his wheelchair? Possibly, but not probably. Mm. And so that's the message I told him. And he's like, yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards you You're not doing anything to me. And I was like, well, let's get some more studies, and then I'll be able to lay out exactly what a surgery would entail. I was like, but... I'm dragging my feet a little bit because I don't know that this is going to mm -hmm. make a huge difference on the positive side in your life. Hmm. You know, it may make a huge difference on the negative side. It could, you know, but I don't know. Wow. And having that conversation is like, hmm, how do I, how do I say, you know, yes to this? How do I push forward? Right. Because if I, it's all about how I present myself. And so before I go further into this story, this leads, this is going to lead us into our topic for today, you know, and our topic for today is judging a book by its cover. Right. Or, you know how you're, you're, you know, the, you always used to hear a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. Well, sometimes there's a sheep in wolf's clothing mm -hmm. as well. It goes both ways, you know. A lot of surgeons at times can present themselves as the savior, knowing that what you're going to do to this patient isn't going to make a difference. So you're actually being a wolf mm. in sheep's mm. clothing. And if I force this guy to have surgery, I'm feeling like a wolf in sheep's clothing because I know the risk may not outweigh, I mean, the benefits may not outweigh the risk. Mm -hmm. And so if I present it to him as, dude, I think you'll be great. And then if he's not great, I get you. I still get paid for the surgery. But, right, right. you know, and so how do I how do I present this? I, so what I decided was, let me just lay it all out there. Here's everything I know. 
there's a whole lot more I don't know when it comes to your recovery. That's the unknown part. Do you want to risk a big surgery with a high complication rate for the unknown? Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and was like, I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, and I was just like, it's just the way it is. Yeah. And so that's that, that whole perception issue where I can talk anybody into or out of a surgery based on what I tell them. You know, I can sway their opinion one way or the other by how I present myself. You know, like we talked about a while ago. Remember the guy I told you about had the bad heart? Yeah. And how I refused to operate on him because he had a bad heart. Right. Well, getting multiple opinions, other doctors are telling the same. And I was like, there's going to be a doctor that will say, no, we can fix this. That's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Right. Especially he's, he's doing you, it for self gain. Right. Especially when you see the probability of yeah. you know, you, someone else, someone else, someone else, and, and then this one doctor that might step in. And say I, he's yeah. making you feel like, Oh, all the other doctors are all the other surgeons are inadequate and I'm the man. <laughs> man, this is a trip. Cause, you know, and I told you I've been watching uh Doctor Death, so yeah. it's kinda like oh man. Yeah, it's very it's it's it, it's very real. Yeah. You know, and so in my profession you have that same scenario. Hmm. Um, before we get too deep into this, let's uh, let's tell these <laughs> fools what we're sipping on today. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Did I just call y'all fools? That's a term of that's, endearment. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a term of endearment. That's definitely Cali right there. That's Cali. Yeah, that's all very the way. Cali. That's the, what's up, fool? What's up, fool? <laughs> <laughs> F O O. What's up, fool? So today, this sip of the day is something. This is what he came up with. What I came up with is called a pineapple cooler. Y'all remember back in the day, the coolers used to sneak <laughs> sneak from your mama. The Seagrams and the, the, uh, the Bartles and James. Bartles and James. <laughs> yeah. well, and you keep sipping on the same one. <laughs> well, this is this is my version of a of a pineapple coconut wine cooler. And so it is pineapple coconut juice, a little just splash of lemon juice, some fine sugar, shake it all up, put it in a glass with uh some white wine. Today we chose to use uh Chardonnay. Actually, no. We used a Sauvignon Blanc today. Okay. Sauvignon Blanc, not a Chardonnay. And, he just uh, wanted to say that out loud. And top it off with a little club soda. And you get <laughs> pineapple cooler, the sipping on excellence way. Cheers, brother. Cheers. And it's damn refreshing. It's very refreshing. <laughs> it's very, very, very good. Very good. So, yeah, man, I'm – when I was, you know, when you when you deal with people in general, mm -hmm. there's always perception versus reality. Of course. You know, and you and I talk about it all the time in the fact that people not just look at us, but the way we look at people and mm -hmm. at times the way that we look at people can change. Yeah. Can change our, you know, we may be wrong with what we're seeing. Right. You know, like how we were, like how I was just talking about coach here. We were talking about how, oh, this big guy, and then you see him move, you automatically assume because he's a big, muscular guy that he's got no flexibility. And then he drops down to the splits, and you're like, oh, shit, do a move. <laughs> you know, he can reach over, grab his toes, stand on his hands, and, yeah. you know, and so it's these assumptions we make about people just right. by looking at them. Right. I mean, even when we were deciding on this topic, I mean, the first thing I thought about was you and your tattoos oh. and just, you know, what's perceived. Because to be honest, there isn't any perception they can really have because you're a doctor. Yes. So <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh -huh. So years ago, um, I was at work and there's this young guy who came in, Hispanic guy, ball head, tattoos everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I does he work at the, uh, yeah. No, no, no. So I'll tell you, he came okay. to the ER. Okay. And so the resident was one of the residents at the time. God, this was a long time ago. Um, presented the patient to me and they're talking to me. Actually, it wasn't a resident. It was one of the ER docs. Um, was talking to me and I'm standing there and I was just like he's like yeah there's this such and such age Hispanic male um, 
and he referred to him as a gangbanger, right? Right. And yeah, I think you told me about this. And thing. he starts talking, and I'm just looking at him like, and he's like, "What?" I was like, "I'm gonna stop you there." I was like, first of all, you called him a gangbanger. Why is that important to me?" He's like, "Oh, you know, just to give you context." And I was like, "Okay." Did he tell you he was a gangbanger? Yeah, like, what's your context? You know, and he was like, well, no. And I was like, so what gave you the assumption or the impression that he's a gangbanger? And this is back in the day when I used to wear, you know, I didn't have tattoos down my arm, but I had a bunch still. And he's like, well, you know, he's Hispanic male, shaved head, tattoos everywhere. It was like, that's the typical whatever. And I chuckled, and I was like, you see? I was like, that's a shitty assumption. He looks at me like all offended, and I was like, if I took off my shirt and came through that ER door and was laying there on a gurney and you saw these tattoos, the first thing you would call me is either a gangbanger or a rapper. Right. Why? Because I'm a black guy, shaved head, tattoos. So why are you making that? And I couldn't be further from that, you know? But yet you judged him because of the way he came in here. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell you he was a gangbanger. He didn't tell you he, you know, anything about him. Those could be tattoos of his mama and he's just paying tribute. How do you know what that is? You know, and you could see the look on his face just distraught, like with embarrassment. It should be. With embarrassment. It should be. And people, you know, make that same, excuse my language, y'all, that same fucking assumption about me. They see me. <sighs> And and it's and it's what's interesting is that because of my profession, I held off on getting tattoos down mm -hmm. my arms for decades. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted certain tattoos, and all the tattoos I've had up until the last you know five years or so were hidden. And but I wanted these tattoos on my arms, and I always told myself, you know, when I get to a certain point in my career where stereotypes don't matter. <laughs> then I'm going to get them done. Why do I have to think that way in the first place? Right. Why couldn't I just express myself the way I want to? Why? Because people out there were judging me based on what they see. Where do you think that comes from, though? Where do you think the, the, the mindset to say this, because this looks this way, this is who they are, where does that come from? It comes from being lazy. Mm. And I say being lazy because it's way easier to make an assumption than it is to just assume nothing and get find the, out the truth and get the information. The truth, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. So, for example, you know, you see it all the time when little, little old ladies are in the elevator and a young black man walks in the elevator and they clutch their purse and pull to the side. They're assuming he might rob her. Right. Why? Because they have this subconscious fear of young black men thinking. You because know, it was created by the media. Thinking yeah. we're animals. Yeah. It was created by television and so on and so forth. But it also goes back to the original thing is they're lazy. Yeah. Because Cause they don't, they don't want to take say, the time hey, how are to you? think. Yeah. It's now, such an easier way. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, it's kind of crazy. And that brings me to our first what's wrong with y'all. Because <laughs> you, know, you notice how I'm mixing it in? Yeah. So Yeah, I see where you're going so with that. So this first what's wrong with y'all, you know, people always look at black men or in general. And people, I know people hate you. You're always talking about black men. Well, I'm, I happen to be one of them. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to divert. Yeah. And, it's, and so people always talk about, you know, fear of us because we're animals. This, that, and the other. DWB. You know, but I was looking at this, this news report, whether it's true or not of this dude who's getting charged with murder did you see this no because he white guy older white guy gets on grinder and eats the testicles of one of his grinder dates and i'm not mistaken jeffrey dahmer was white too right yeah so it's funny how people <laughs> call us animals but we're not going around eating people you know, and you think about all the craziest shit that goes on. <laughs> and so I was talking to Kenny earlier about that show, Ridiculousness. Oh, and, man, yes. And they, and it just so happens that the host of Ridiculousness is white. 
Right. Rob Deer Deck is white, but he always makes comments about look at all these videos we put up. Right. How many of these cr- people doing crazy shit are something other than white? Hard. Hardly any. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Especially when it comes it. with the 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 toilets and, and, the, it's, and it's like, kicking each on. other in the balls and <sighs> firecrackers on, in the butt and all this all this stuff. It's like come on. Man. So but yet people see us and look at us as crazy. And he calls them out. That's yeah, the beauty it's part. It's the beauty of it. He's yeah, because like, he's like, oh, my people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, look at Deborah. Look so, at Deborah. So he, he calls gets, them all Deborah. He, he gets a high five of that one. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and so my what's wrong with you? I was like, why do we continue to make these assumptions? And why are we judging people based on what they look like when sometimes that animal is the person you don't think is that animal? Right, <laughs> you know. Right, you know what? That, when you were talking about uh, the old lady in the elevator, it made me think about working in a department store. And you know, security—they will immediately they they they're on. Right, every black dude that walks in the store, yes, another black one, and and uh, the the head guy of this one department store I worked at, <laughs> he said, "Yeah, no, I don't go that route." He said because. Every time I'm taking my eye off of, every time I keep my eye on the brother, that old white lady with the big burka bag. Stealing whatever, everything. Stealing everyone. Cleaning us out. <laughs> he said, do you know how many bags I've gone in and seen women just, I'm pulling out grows of stuff. I'm like, wow. I, I can believe it. Yeah. You know, and, you know, we talk about, you know, we're talking about judging a book by its cover. How many times have you looked at and this is this is not how many times you, meaning you or me, but in general, people will say, okay, she's very beautiful. She's probably not smart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And what, what the hell does that mean? Right. Like, where does that come from? That because you're beautiful, you can't be smart. Or if you're smart, you're probably not that attractive. Not that attractive, right. And wh- who the fuck brought that about? You know? But again, it is us passing judgment on people being lazy without understanding their story. Yeah. Look at how we judge homeless people or the PC word is the unhoused. Anyway. um, (laughs) Yeah, I know. I I couldn't even get that. You're 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 walking down the street and somebody asks you for a dollar. The first assumption you make is oh, they're going to go buy drugs with it. Oh, they're going to go buy an alcoholic beverage with it. How about maybe that dude or that woman just wants something to eat? But yet, we judge them because we assume the only reason why somebody would be on the street is because they are a drug addict or an alcoholic. And that's a shitty assumption. And why do we make that assumption? Because we're looking at them, they're disheveled, they may have dirty clothes, you know, whatever it may be, and they're asking you for help. But you're automatically assuming it's only because they want to get high because yeah. you're looking at them thinking, well, that's what they all do. Yeah. I have a story about that. Yeah. Um, Kenyatta and I were going, I can't even remember where we were going. We were, but we stopped by the bank and uh, get some cash out. And it was just this kid. He was just sitting there and he just he looked so sad. And it was, it was so hardening just to watch him. And it's like, he didn't ask for money, didn't ask for anything. Right. And we're like, do you need some money? So we gave him uh, some cash. Okay. And he just, he's like, thank you. Thank you so much. And he just took off. So we get in the car and we're driving off. And we're like, dang, where did he go? He disappeared. He was in front. He like completely catacorned across the street was at the, uh, the rallies. I was like, I immediately, I just started bawling. I was just like, Wow. Because wow. you don't see that. Yeah. You don't see the, the oh, my God, I'm hungry. Somebody took care of me. Oh, I appreciate it. You That's don't see that. At all. No. At all. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's I think we don't take the time to push our own subconscious biases aside <laughs> and try to see past that, yeah. you know. Because think about it. You may come across that sheep in wolf's clothing. Right. I'm going to say that again. You may come across that sheep in wolf's clothing. You know, <laughs> I met a guy who, when I was a med student, 
he was in a mental health facility uh, when I was rotating on my psych rotation. Mm -hmm. And I'm this this middle aged brother. He's probably in his mid fifties, but he used to always carry around this. You know those lab notebooks mm -hmm. with the grid lines and all that. Yeah. He'd carry around. He's always feverishly writing in it, writing in it, writing in it. And I would ask the doctors. I'm like, yeah, what's up with that guy? Oh, he's schizophrenic. He's hallucinates. Blah blah. He's he thinks he's something he's mm -hmm. not. He keeps calling himself Doctor So and So, right? And I was like, well, do you know that he's not? They're like, look at him. That was the response. Look at him. He doesn't have, he won't talk to anybody. He's, he's right. here in this facility. They're like, why don't you make him your patient for the time you're here? You can learn from him. I was like, cool. So I just sat and talked to him, right? He gives me his name, and, but he wouldn't let go of the book. He had the book clutched to his, like mm -hmm. this as, every time he talked to me. I was like, what's in the book? He's like, you want to steal my ideas? I was like, cool, no, I'm good. <laughs> so... I happen to see one day as he's feverishly writing all these physics equations and being an engineer, I started recognizing some of these theories that he was jotting down, right? And I just asked him, I was like, yeah, you know, this is how I came in. I was like, hey, I have a degree in engineering. That's some pretty interesting stuff you're writing down. And you saw him perk up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, tell me more about yourself. He's like, I'm a doctor. I was like, okay, you know, so there's a mental health component to this problem. Right. I was like, all right, tell me, what kind of doctor are you? I have my PhD in physics and blah, 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 blah. And he just starts rattling off all these different things. I was like, oh, okay, so where'd you go to school? Just trying to get him to open up and talk about it. So he's like, oh, I went to school here. I got my PhD from University of Washington, blah, 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 blah. Wow. I just started going through. And everybody always blew him off. And then he starts going off on tangents. Like, he can only focus for a minute. And then it went off on, I'm writing things down in the book because the government's listening everywhere. He's like, like this glass. It shimmers in a certain way. So, it can, I mean, just, it was he, was, he was definitely delusional. But he could bring it back and tell you the truth. So, I found it. I was like, you know what? I need to figure out who this dude is. So, I actually called the University of Washington. And got a hold of his professor that he did his PhD work with. And he wrote up his dissertation and never presented it to his professor because he just lost it and left school. But he mm -hmm. was done with his PhD work in physics. So te technically, he's so a, he was So he's he wasn't lying about his knowledge base. Right. And they were like, yeah, whatever happened to him, whatever. I was just, I was like, you know what, I was just curious because I couldn't tell them he was there at the mental health okay. facility because that's a HIPAA violation. Yeah. But I was just like, oh, I was just curious. You know, I met him and he told me about you, blah, blah, whatever. That's cool. Whatever happened to him? I was like, yeah, he just, I just met him one day and I just wanted to make sure that, you know, this was him, this, that, and the other. <coughs> and, uh, but it was wild that everybody was judging that he was just because of the way he looked, right. that he was lying about everything. And he wasn't lying. He literally flipped out when he was in, for lack of better words, he, he right. literally just kind of, whether it was the stress or anything, just made him lose it. And he quit his program, disappeared, became homeless, and then ended up in this mental facility, this mental health facility, because he thought now he was paranoid about people being after him. And this was part of his schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. But when he was on his meds, he was able to control it and actually get his PhD, you know, finish his PhD work. But okay. never was awarded his PhD because he couldn't sit for his dissertation. Mm. Kind of crazy, right? Mm. So, wow. again, a sheep in wolf's clothing. This dude was brilliant, but because he didn't look so and because he didn't act so, people assumed he wasn't. <laughs> kind of crazy, right? Yeah, man. One of, my, uh, one of my first managers when I started doing sales, uh, fresh, out of, uh, fresh out of college, so he was telling me a story about judging a book by his cover and he used to sell timeshares and when he sold timeshares he said you know guys are sitting in the office pretty much all day long you know they're just you know waiting for somebody to come in so right. this old dude comes up in this old beat up you know like 50s pickup truck he drives up and he he walks in he's like hey, you know, hey give, give, let me Take a look at one of these timeshares, you know. Nobody gets up to help. And 
He said, you know what? I obliged him. You know, you never know. Walked up to the guy and said, hey, you know, so how can I help you? He said, oh, you know, I'm interested in possibly getting one time shares. You know, I don't know. Let's, let's just see what happens. My wife and I are about to retire. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to play with this. Let's go. You know, these are your options. This is what we have. This is, he's like, hey, you know, you seem like you're pretty aware. And let me not give you the full spiel. Let me just show you uh, some of the goods. He said, this guy goes to his car, comes back out, and hands him a big wad of cash as a down payment. <laughs> and all these guys that passed up because they were not wanting to take the time, he was one of the newer guys there and just said, you know what, I'm just going to learn, I'm going to help everybody. And he didn't judge that book, and he took that cover. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, and then he said that was... That taught him right then and there, do not ever judge anybody. How many times have you been in this situation? You know, and we've all done it. You see, switching gears a little bit, you see yeah. a woman. She's stunning. Mm -hmm. And then she's with this just random old dude or just a random, like, they don't fit. What's the first thing you say? Cold digger. Right. You automatically think, oh, he's got money. Yeah. He's loaded, right? And it, and why are we that way? Like, what may? I mean, what, life's experiences taught us that that may be close to true, <laughs> depending on your demographic and where you are. The probability, <laughs> the probability is high, but it ain't always true. But yeah. yet, we always say, oh, yeah. "Oh, she's bad. Look at her. Why is she with him? Oh, he must have money all the time, every single time." We uh -huh. won't say, "Oh, he must be smart." Or oh he 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 treats her well that's why you know <laughs> we just assume oh she's with him because he's right. he's he's loaded right it, it's crazy and how many times have you been out with we talked about this before female friends whatever how many times have I I've been out with female friends they'll see an attractive woman walking down the street and be like oh look at her she thinks she's she thinks she's all that oh but wait a minute this is my favorite <laughs> this is my favorite mm. Mm, look at that. Mm -hmm. And all, hey, yeah, and then and nothing, all she, nothing, you know, just that's enough. Everything you just said was yeah. in that statement. And mm. all she's doing is walking down the street. Yeah, but she's all of a sudden now. Who does that? Who does that bee think she is? She thinks she's all that. I don't like her. Why? Because she just happened to walk down the street dressed nice, you know. But it's it's all these assumptions that people start making about other people based purely on what they see with no knowledge of character at all whatsoever. Keyword, lazy. Just, you know, I'm, I'm going to, as you said it, I'm going to keep bringing that word up, lazy. Yeah. It's easier to just not like you instead of <clears throat> learn something about you and then realize, oh, shit, I like this person. Because <laughs> it's just way easier just to not like you. <laughs> you know? I mean, we have an interesting one. Remember that, um, that statement that was made to me uh, in the morning? About you people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I had to kind of let them kindly know that you people is we people. <laughs> just, what do you, I mean. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, okay. All people, right. people just, they don't get it, you know. And, and we've all been, and myself included, we've all been guilty of judging people prematurely. Yes. You know. Of course. And, you're you human. should you should spend your whole life trying not to. Right. You know, giving people the benefit of the doubt is is hard. It's not easy, and it's easier just to judge them. I won't say hard. Let's say challenging. Well, it, like I said, it's yeah, right. It's easier. Yeah. It's easier just to just to just to judge than it is to give somebody the benefit of the doubt and yeah. figure it out. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm just a big play on words. So you know, yeah. once you say hard, that's that's it's almost kind of finite. But if it's challenging, you're going to work past that. You're giving yourself a, a if you're that type of person that yeah, exactly. wants to that that but is okay with aren't. being challenged. Then a lot of people no. aren't. That's why they if it's challenging for them to, eh, I just not gonna like them. Right. I've had, <laughs> I had somebody back in the day when I was first moving to L.A. Okay, who another surgeon told my old boss, you know he didn't show up. He was supposed to meet with me. He didn't show up to meet with me ahead of time. He tells my old boss, you know, what, uh, you know, I don't like laying out. And he was like, well, why don't you like him? He's like, have you ever met him? He's like, no, but, you know, I've seen him and I just, I don't like him. 
Oh, yeah. What kind of shit sense does that make? You saw me, so you don't like me. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I don't like how you look, but you cool with me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. But uh, it's just, it's stupid. Yeah. That that's where people take the whole, you know, perception of judging you just by looking at you. Yeah. People don't want to take time to open the book and read it a little bit. No. You know, um, doing sales, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn how to, you know, one, mirror people. You right. learn how to take that step back to make them feel comfortable, to lower their guard, to take away that fear. Because they have, a, if especially if you're walking to someone's door, right? oh, they have a ton of projections. Oh, for they sure. They have a lot of thoughts. And not just race, just a lot of thoughts, oh, period. Oh, for sure. You know, so that taught me a lot as far as not to judge doing sales. You know, it's like, uh, okay, I'm going to take this person to for where they are. You know, and. It is what it is. You know, it's, it's, it's little things like <laughs> this comedian said once. Um, yeah, he's like, call me what you want. But he's like, I don't blame you. If I'm walking down the street. And I see a, and I'm walking with my wife, and I see a group of young brothers walk towards me. He's like, eh, I might start feeling some kind of way. <laughs> right? But then he's like, if I'm in certain parts of this country, and I'm walking with my wife, and I see a group of young white boys walking towards me, he's like, I'm still gonna feel a certain kind of way. That's right. He's like, so he's like, that whole, and and when I'm thinking about that scenario because I think that judging a book by its cover comes from a self protective mechanism. Mm-hmm. Of, I'm gonna be cautious. I'm not saying you're a criminal, but I'm gonna watch you because people that look like you or, or right. in these certain situations, you're grouped. You're grouped. And yeah. so I'm like, huh, let me just be a little bit cautious. Might I cross the street? Maybe. Is that the right thing to do? Probably not. But the one time you don't, <laughs> shit jumps off and you're like, damn, I should have yeah. crossed the street. Yeah. You know? And so. Am I going to assume that somebody coming towards me with a hoodie and a mask on is about to rob me? During COVID, probably not. But prior to COVID, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. that's that's a judgment that's based on self-preservation. There are other judgments that are just are just bullshit. Yeah. And that's the shit that we come across yeah. most days. Yeah. You know, and it's just how do we get how do we get past this as a society? How do we get past these notions of misconception, these notions of judgment, these notions of I'd rather not. How do we get past that? Um, I don't know if we get past it. I think that we have to go through it. We have to, we have to, bottom line is you have to stay in your lane. I'm sorry. You know, it's like you got to focus on you. And at the same time, you're just, you're focused on what other people are doing or what other people look like or what you don't like. That's just time away from yourself. I mean, look at the, look at the bullshit we did as a country after 9-11. Yeah. How we started judging everybody who wore a turban as, oh, they're a terrorist or anybody with Middle East descent. Yeah. If I'm on a plane and somebody from, with a Middle Eastern background gets on the plane, I'm freaking out because, because <clears throat> oh, they might fl- blow up the plane just because people who we are at war with right it's 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 it's, it's, it's yeah it's because it's crazy off, off of, or, they make a whole religion radical they're radical christians oh middle christians america over, christians over the years have done way worse than muslims <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and those of y'all who get mad at that statement just now Look in the mirror. <laughs> For real. You know? Yeah, you got to know your pit. You got to know your history. Everybody's got their dirt everybody, through time. Everybody. Everybody's everybody. done dirt through time. Yeah. You yeah. know? And yet we are judging. Think about how, for example, when COVID was just kicking up and we didn't know much about it. If somebody went <coughs> next to you, right? You automatically, oh, you got COVID. Close, move. Get you away. got the vid. You got the vid. Yeah. Why? Because. I swallowed saliva down the wrong pipe. <laughs> but think you know? about how COVID is related to Chinese. So all of a sudden, a whole culture of people are a are problem. Exactly. A whole culture of people are a problem. 
you brought this here. Well, no, I was here with you, <laughs> getting it with you. <laughs> right? <laughs> you dumbass. <laughs> I mean, think about this. Think about when HIV was a thing. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I mean, HIV is still a, still thing, a thing. But think about when we Crazy, knew way right? less about it, and mm -hmm. people automatically assumed if you had HIV, you're gay. Yeah. Then we had Arthur Ashe you know, and Ryan. Yeah. We had to look at Ryan. Right? Uh, yeah. But the thing is, as soon as somebody walked into somebody's office with a history of HIV, they automatically assumed that they were homosexual. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, judging a book by only reading the first page. They're not even reading the first page. Well, they had to read right. the first page and know they got HIV. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm saying that. Yeah. But Maybe the table of contents. Yeah. And it's just, it's <laughs> the dumbest shit ever. Yeah. But yet, throughout, throughout the times and throughout society, we continue to do that same thing. We continue to, with very little information, pass judgment on the entire individual. Yeah. And <laughs> when, when has that ever served us positively? Never. I don't think it ever. Did. I don't think it's ever served no. us positively. I don't think there's ever been good that can come from that. No. No. And I think now, going forward, with this new age of information, we're going to see a lot more bullshit coming out because <laughs> you know because people make passing judgment on shit they don't know, and I think. And people probably hate me for this. One of the worst things ever that's just happened was Elon Musk taking over Twitter. Oh, I, I, I agree with you. And mm -hmm. now, have you seen all the posts coming out now with people saying, thank God I can say the N-word now, you know, and thank God, oh, I can post this now. And this one guy was posting, and he just put nigger, 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 nigger on his post. He's like... I can tweet this now because Elon Musk now owns Twitter and there's no going to be no censorship. How crazy is that? That people now are going to feel comfortable with this judgment and saying and doing whatever they want because of that. I think, yeah. I think there was a reason for that censorship because it protects the young uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The young, um, the young minds who are impressionable from reading that crap. But because you can't turn Twitter off to that <laughs> ten-year-old or that twelve-year-old right. and say there's certain posts you can't see, you're gonna be able to see them all if they're uncensored. I think what's uh, what's going to be very interesting is is that. Parents People are, are going to be like, he said the N-word right. on a podcast. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because I can. Because I can. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> In case you were wondering, you can't. I think it's going to get to a point where we really have to start taking that dive of actually parents parenting. Yeah. You know, teachers teaching. Stop educating. Letting, stop letting electronics teach your kids. Right. Stop letting stop letting the school system tell exactly this is how this is going to go down. When, and when, as a teacher, you understand and know the worth of a good quality education, start delivering that message. Yes. Tell them. Share with them. Help them. Show them that extra curricula that they can go through to understand so that way they can grow. Teach them about words. Words are just words. And the only meaning is what's between your head, your ears, to help you understand that it don't mean shit. You are the one who gives those words meaning. Yeah. And how you use that yeah. weapon, how you use that weapon is vital. Yeah. You know, you can use those, you can use that same word for good or for hate. You know, it just depends on how you use those words. Yeah. You and, know? and don't address it with fear. Understand. Be, be ready for it. Be ready to receive as well. Don't be afraid of knowledge. Yep. Don't be afraid to learn. Yep. Don't be lazy and say, I don't need to learn. I'm just going to live my life by what somebody tells me. Yep. Because most of the time, 90% of what people tell you is probably false or oh, it's very all... skewed from the truth. Right. Yeah. You know? You look at a story long enough, it always changes shape. And there's an, everything you hear is probably half fact. Right. Especially if a story's been told down, 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 you know, three to five generations down. 
guess what? It's it, not the same no, story. It gets changed. It gets watered down, and it's yeah. and it's it eventually is made to suit the times. The story changes based on or the suit list. the suitor. Yeah, based on the audience. Yeah, <laughs> you know, based on the audience and what the and what the the storyteller wants you to hear. Right. You know, if they want you to get a certain message, they're going to tell that same story a different way. Right. You know, they'll still stick to the general gist of the story. <laughs> but even think about how we talked about religion, how religion, you know, everything is so about peace, about God, about, you know, that connection. And I'm speaking mainly, especially with uh, Christianity, but yet we're judging, they're judging who's in the choir, who's the director, <laughs> what the preacher's doing. The preacher's judging people in the audience. You know, everybody's doing yeah, a judgment, but we're all supposed to be... Got you know, me choked up over here. Yeah, I know, right? The same here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be coughing all through this episode. Oh, well. <laughs> I know, right? No editing, bro. And none. Nah, nah. It's just, I, I just find it interesting, you know? It's like, it's it's everywhere. Yeah, and you were bringing up religion. It's kind of hypocritical, you know? Yeah. Think about this. This is what I always thought was funny. The Ten Commandments says, thou shalt not kill. That's one of the Ten Commandments, right? But then in the Christian <laughs> Crusades, they were killing everybody who didn't believe in Christianity. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. But thou shalt not kill. Unless you don't believe what I believe. <laughs> That's not what the Bible says. Right. If the Bible is what you believe. So, you know, there's, you, you, you go around this world and you go around going through life, passing judgment on people passing judgment on things passing judgment on cultures passing judgment based on what you see mm-hmm. you have no experience with it you know nothing about it or you have very little knowledge about it and you're not willing to listen and feel and take that knowledge in prior to passing judgment you just say it's much easier to just pass just I'm gonna believe what I believe which is also uh, I think critical when it comes to we always talk about leadership in the world now. And then, oh, there are no leaders. That's because we're not thinking. We're not critical thinkers. No. Leaders are critical thinkers. They go against the grain sometimes. They they have a point. They have an issue. They have something they need to address. They get everything out. But they also know how to push from behind. They know how to help. They know how to guide. But What people don't realize is that people all say, well, not everybody's meant to be a leader. We're all well, leaders. Well, exactly. Think about this. People always mention, oh, you follow like sheep. But what does the sheep do? It follows the sheep in front of them. Mm-hmm. And so the Somebody sheep, had, right? And yeah. so the sheep behind is now your follower. So you're leading the sheep behind you. You may be a sheep, but you're also leading a sheep. Yeah. So if you don't think of yourself as a leader, then you're dumb because you don't understand that somebody is following your lead. Yeah. Regardless if you feel like you're yeah. a natural born leader yeah. or not. Yeah. And you know, I did and once that you have post. Kids, yeah. You're leading your kids. Yeah, I did a post recently about that, about leadership. Yeah. I said, you know, a mother, she's a leader. A father, he's a leader. Guess what? They're teaching their future leader. One hundred percent. You know? And I, I think people forget that. Yeah. You know, but it's it's not our job to teach people how to live their life. No, we just give our you job the information. To, our job is to just give y'all our experience, <laughs> yeah. give y'all our thoughts, yeah. our opinions. And shit, maybe y'all will listen to part of it and Bro. get something from it. Do something. You know, just... <laughs> Do something. Stop thinking it's too late for you to right. learn. Right. Stop thinking it's too late for you right. to learn some shit. Stop thinking it's, that, oh, it, I don't think like them, so they have nothing to teach me. And stop judging a book by... Well, I won't say stop. Work on stopping to judge a book by its cover. Oh, man. I like that. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we got to give them that, 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 that grounding to at least start because if they're not going to start, you I'm know. I'm going to tell you like this, though. Don't stop judging me. I'd like you to misjudge me on a regular basis. Okay, Cat Williams. <laughs> 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 if you ain't got nobody to hate on, feel free to nah, hate on I me. Want you, I want you to misjudge me because – I like surprising the shit out of y'all. I love it too, bro. I like for you to think one thing. I walk into a room, you think one thing, and then I open my mouth and you're like, oh shit. You know why? Yeah. Because now I'm already one up on you and now I've won. <laughs> that's, be- <laughs> that's because you're very articulate for a black man. <laughs> Why 
thought I'd know he was going to go there. Oh, my God. Oh. I've been waiting to say that with all episodes. Yeah. He does an all-time classic. <laughs> it really is. That is an all-time classic. If, if you're not if like If you rest. are other than black, please don't say that. <laughs> you're very articulate for a black man. Or you know what the other one is. You're ve- just a, Don't even say you're very articulate because that makes me believe you're surprised that I can speak. Right. <laughs> Don't even don't even compliment me by saying you're right. very articulate because that makes me believe you really thought I wouldn't be before I open my mouth. Or black women they always hear, especially dark skin. You're very beautiful for a black woman. Yeah, it's like <laughs> that's some bullshit. Yeah, I'm laughing because yeah. it's crazy. And it happens all the oh, time. Man. Like because my skin is dark, I'm once you to be add, ugly. Once you add four, four. it's a wrap. <laughs> You've already lost. That's the dumbest shit ever. I'm telling you. Once you add four, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know I'm what? getting, I'm getting, I'm getting hot. hot. You know, I'm getting hot. In I here, thought so we were supposed to cool off at the end of the show. I'm getting hot. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Fix your shit. Hey y'all, this is just how we are, man. <laughs> Giving y'all something cool to oh, sip on. Oh, judging ass. That's what we do. Judging every last I'm angry. one of y'all. Yeah. Anyway, Coach, man, this has been a good episode. This was a good you one, got a little man. shit off my uh, chest. <laughs> I'm saying it with my chest. Where are they going to uh, find you, man? They're going to find me at Coach KJ Knows. At Coach KJ Knows on Instagram and CoachKJ.com. And you can go find us also at SOE Podcast. Yes, dot com. com. Also, SOE underscore podcast on uh, IG. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're going to find me <laughs> at Leonel <laughs> Hunt on IG and Huntspine.com. And uh, y'all, check out that YouTube. This too. YouTube. Sipping on excellence. Go to the search bar. You're going to see all of this. <laughs> all these antics and more truth coming at y'all, man. Just oh, man. Each and every week. Yeah, you people. And we out. <laughs> Deuces.